What's up guys, I'm Justin Burkholz. Thank you for watching. Today's video is about circadian rhythm entrainment. So we're gonna talk about the effects of light exposure and the benefits of synchronizing your circadian rhythm with the natural light-dark cycle of the Earth. But before we get to the good stuff, if you're interested in mysticism, history of religion, spiritual practices, or science-based protocols for improving health and wellness, and want to support my effort to bring this content in an accessible format to a wide audience for free here on YouTube, make sure to hit subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon or with a one-time donation. Those links can be found below. Humanity is facing a meaning crisis, a plague of disconnection and loneliness that is an inevitable result of our modern society and our progress as a species. We've been separated from our natural habitat, from the divine and sacred, and we are out of sync with the universe in which we live. Advertising breeds within us unquenchable desires and unmeetable expectations. And at the same time, people are increasingly turning their back towards organized religion, which was one of the last remaining institutions, bringing people together and creating a sense of community and connection. It's no wonder then that rates of Drug abuse and depression, anxiety and suicide are on the rise. These are all symptoms of disconnection. And just like any other disease, treating the symptoms without addressing the underlying cause does little good. Our scientific and political attempts to treat this plague have not been very successful and neither have our religions. So people have been increasingly turning towards things like mysticism, mindfulness, spirituality, neo-paganism, and psychedelics, because all of these paths offer the promise of connection to nature and tradition, and they can be attractive alternatives to those whose temperaments are opposed to dogmatic traditions, because they focus on what's called orthopraxy, or right practice, rather than orthodoxy, or right belief. Unfortunately, they may not always deliver on those promises. So I've devised a number of practices and techniques based on a combination of scientific and religious understanding and a lot of time in nature to aid myself and others as we attempt to reconnect with nature, with tradition, with each other, and with ourselves. Because that really is the goal of all spiritual practices. As Rupert Sheldrake said, connection is the theme that unifies them all, spiritual practices, they all lead us beyond the mundane to deeper levels of connection. In a world where we are constantly surrounded and bombarded by electronic screens and advertising, it can be hard to find peace and connection with nature. Many people struggle with issues like insomnia, irregular sleep patterns, an inability to wake up in the morning, and a lack of energy throughout the day. And this leads to a less productive and less fulfilling life and takes a toll on our mental health. A lot of these common problems stem from a disruption of our circadian rhythm. And recent research has provided ways to reset our internal biological clock to reconnect our circadian rhythm with the natural light cycle of the earth. This reconnection with nature and stabilization of our biological clock has many health benefits. It helps us fall asleep easier, makes it easier to wake up, gives us more energy during the day when we need it, helps us focus better, helps us digest food more efficiently, and can help alleviate depression and anxiety. Those are significant benefits and have a strong impact on our quality of life. And training your circadian rhythm can make a serious difference in your life and productivity, improving your efficiency at work and your enjoyment at home. But in order to entrain our circadian rhythm, we need to regulate our light exposure. So let's talk about electric lighting. Electricity has been hugely important for the progress of humanity and allows us to live very different lives than the generations of humans who came before its discovery. Unfortunately, it also has had a negative effect on our sleep. Exposure to electrical light after sunset disrupts our natural circadian rhythm and breaks our synchronization with the Earth's natural light cycle. This exposure leads to later sleep schedules and less effective sleep. 
leads to lower energy levels during the day when we need it and higher energy levels at night when we're trying to fall asleep. And this is only one of the reasons why it's important to disconnect from electronics before bed. A recent study in cell phone use in teens showed that late night usage was associated with depressed moods, lower self-esteem, reduced coping abilities, and lower academic performance. And those effects are unlikely to be limited to teenage use. Other studies have shown that using electronic screens like computers and cell phones before bed leads to poorer sleep. But most people don't realize that exposure to electrical lighting has the same effect. So while it is good to, for instance, read a book before bed, using an electric lamp to do so is still negatively affecting your sleep. Fortunately, the intensity and wavelength of light produced by fire are different, so light created by fire doesn't seem to have the same effect. What that means is that you can use candles or campfire or a fireplace, anything like that, and those are totally okay and will not have any detrimental effect on your sleep or your circadian rhythm. In fact, one of the world's leading experts on circadian rhythm, Dr. Samer Hattar, chief of the section on light and circadian rhythms at the National Institute of Mental Health, said he only uses candle lighting in his home after dark every day. That's how seriously he takes it. And since he ostensibly knows more about the effects of light exposure on mental health than anyone else in the world, and he felt it was worthwhile to modify his life in that manner, I think this is something that at least deserves our consideration. I know most people aren't going to make a drastic change like that, at least not right away, but I think we can all benefit from being more intentional and aware about our light exposure. By limiting our exposure to light after dark to only firelight, we can actually reconnect with natural solar patterns fairly quickly. There are a number of benefits to the synchrony. One is that the body starts releasing melatonin earlier, which helps us fall asleep. Another is that we stop releasing melatonin earlier, which makes it much easier to wake up in the morning. And it also helps align our sleep cycles for optimum restfulness during the night while sleeping. So that means it's easier to fall asleep, we get better sleep while we're in bed, and it's much easier to wake up in the morning. All those benefits when our circadian rhythm is aligned with the natural solar cycle. Not only is it important to limit electrical light exposure after dark, but it is also important to increase natural light exposure during the day, especially in the morning. Studies have shown that exposure to sunlight within the first hour of waking helps synchronize our circadian clock and increases energy level and mood throughout the day. And it's also the best thing we can do to help us fall asleep at night. A 15 to 20 minute walk in the morning should be sufficient to gain these benefits. And that's what I do first thing every morning. I take my dog out for a walk around the neighborhood for around 20 to 30 minutes. But if you don't have that much time, that's okay. Dr. Andrew Huberman recommends getting outside first thing in the morning to get sunlight in your eyes without sunglasses and facing towards the sun, but not staring directly into it, of course, uh, for about five minutes on a clear day should be sufficient up to about 20 minutes if it's a really dark and cloudy day. Okay, so that really means you don't need a whole lot of time to get this beneficial effect. You just need to get outside right away when you wake up and get some sunlight in your eyes without wearing sunglasses, without looking through glass or anything like that, okay? It's important to note a couple of things. One is that looking out through a car window or windshield or through your home's window will not work. A second is that if you do get up before sunrise, like I know sometimes I do in the winter months when sunrise is later, you can go ahead and turn on bright artificial lights in your home, but those aren't going to get you the same uh, intensity of light that you need to really get all of the benefits. So as soon as the sun does come up, try and get outside for a few minutes and get some of that natural light exposure as well. 
And then third is that this works best if it is actually still the morning and the sun is at what is called a low solar angle. So that means that it's uh, low in the sky and not directly overhead because the effect of uh, sunlight on our eyes and on our skin varies depending on where it is in the sky. If you're interested in learning more about the science behind this and the mechanistic explanations of how all of that works, go check out Andrew's channel. He has quite a few videos uh, devoted just to this and he talks about it on a lot of his podcasts as well. If you look at anything uh, having to do with him and what he recommends for a morning routine, this is one of the main things he'll talk about is uh, getting light in your eyes. Uh, he considers it one of the best things you can do for your health overall, and so do I. Um, so I'll post the link in the description to uh, one of his videos with uh, Samra Hattara that I spoke about earlier, and to his channel as well, so you can check all that out. All right, so now I wanna take all of that information and condense it into a practical protocol for entraining circadian rhythm. And this is a protocol that my partner and I have used quite a few times. Um, it has given me really good results. And so this is not just, you know, theoretical based on the research, I think this might work. No, this is something that myself and others have tried and we have had good results with it. And it's pretty simple. So there's four things that you need to remember whenever you're going to do this. So the first one is uh, the most important. It's what I was just talking about. It's getting that natural sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning, five to 20 minutes, no sunglasses, okay? And that's something that honestly, it's best to do every day, uh, year round. So uh, I, while I'm kind of creating a protocol for a acute um, practice, you know, to do this at a specific time if your sleep is really disrupted and you want to reset or realign. But if you want to keep that alignment going and keep it in place and keep yourself from getting too far off, the best thing you can do is to make a habit of every morning getting some direct sunlight in your eyes. All right, so that's number one. Number two is to spend some time outside during the day and get direct light exposure on your bare exposed skin. So don't wear all long sleeves and mask and cover yourself up. That's not gonna do you any good. That light's not getting to your skin. And the benefits of light exposure on your skin go far beyond just producing vitamin D. It also helps regulate your hormones and studies have shown that it can boost testosterone production. Okay, so that's number two. Uh, get some sunlight. Uh, as much as you can on your skin during the day. Number three is don't use any electrical lighting or electronic screens after sunset. All right, so during the day, do whatever you want, get all your video games, your TV, your work on the computer, whatever you wanna do, do all that during the day while the sun is out, that's totally fine. But if you're trying to do this practice to uh, reset or realign your circadian rhythm, you will want to avoid all of that as much as possible after dark. Which brings me to number four, uh, which is after dark, you are probably going to need some sort of lighting. So uh, you can go ahead and use firelight, uh, fireplace, campfire, candles, all those are great and won't have any negative effects. Now only one week of removing uh, electric light exposure after dark and increasing our light exposure during the day should be enough to completely reset our internal biological clock, our circadian rhythm, no matter how far off it is. So for instance, if you um, need to completely flip your sleep schedule, like 10 or 12 hours or something really dramatic, one week of doing this should be enough to get you back on track and aligned with that new sleep schedule. Now, for most people, that's going to be much more than they need. Most people only want to shift their out their sleep, you know, maybe an hour to three or four hours, maybe somewhere in that range. And so what you can do is you can think of it as every day that you do this protocol, your sleep should phase shift. That's when you uh, shift your sleep uh, schedule um, by any amount it should shift about one to two hours per day. 
So for instance, if you're regularly falling asleep at 1 a.m. and you do this for a day, that should shift it back to about uh, midnight. And do it another day, 11, another day, 10, whatever you wanna do, it should be right around uh, that, that amount per day that you can shift. So you can use that to plan out uh, how long you want to do this uh, protocol for. Now for myself and my partner, usually we're just making small adjustments when we've gotten thrown off by traveling or uh, the holidays, staying up late, something like that. And so we usually do this over the course of a weekend. We will start on Friday and go like Friday evening to Sunday evening. And that's usually plenty um, for us, okay? I've done that quite a few times over the last few years and it's always a refreshing and rejuvenating experience and it always helps me get better sleep afterwards. Um, so it's something that you could even plan to do regularly if you want, like every quarter or something like that. Or you can just do it whenever you've gotten disrupted by travel or something uh, else, like I mentioned earlier. Another good thing to know is that obviously this can help with jet lag. So if you travel really far and you have significant jet lag and you want to get yourself aligned with the natural light cycle of where you are uh, now, where you traveled to, this is a really good way to help you get on track really quickly. I used some of this information myself when I traveled uh, to Israel earlier in the year and that's quite a big shift. I think it was 10 hours uh, from California to Israel and it really threw off uh, my circadian rhythm and I was able to get back on track within about three days, uh, three, three or four days, something like that. Um, so pretty quickly. It really is amazing how big of a difference this can make in your life. I used to have horrible insomnia. Uh, I dreaded going to sleep. I had a terrible time getting up in the morning uh, for pretty much my entire life up until I found uh, how, to, how to do this, how to fix my circadian rhythm in my sleep and it dramatically improved my quality of life. What a lot of people don't realize is that um, lack of sleep makes everything more difficult. So a lot of research has shown that lack of sleep uh, impairs us about as much as being intoxicated on alcohol. So like for every hour of sleep that we lose per night, that's about the equivalent impairment of having a drink. So if you think about that, if you lost two or three hours of sleep in a night, you're basically operating like you're intoxicated throughout the entire day. That's gonna make it much more difficult to make healthy decisions, to uh, form new habits, to exercise, to problem solve. It's gonna make work more difficult and it's gonna really significantly hamper your mood as well. So if you think about it that way, if you want to try and form new good habits, one of the best things you can do is get your circadian rhythm and your sleep in line first. And that's really going to set you up to have the energy and the positive uh, affect or mood to actually get started, to overcome that initial mental friction that it takes to do a new habit. There's always that kind of resistance you have to overcome. And that's going to be very much um, more difficult if you haven't gotten a good night's sleep. So if you do this first and get your circadian rhythm entrained and get your sleep under control, it's gonna be so much easier to uh, form those new habits and uh, you know get healthier overall. So if you're having trouble falling asleep and waking up and you wanna sleep better, have more energy, improve focus, or if you're struggling to form new habits like eating healthier or exercising or meditating, try this out. Once you have your circadian rhythm and sleep in order, everything else will become much easier. All right, well, thank you for watching and that's it for this video. I hope you learned something about sleep and circadian rhythm that you can use to improve your quality of life as I used this knowledge to improve mine. If you're interested in learning more about light exposure and circadian rhythm, I will post links in the description to uh, all of the research and podcasts and everything that I referenced. If you have any questions as well, please leave those in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. 
And if I don't know the answer to your question, I promise I will find it for you. And once again, thank you so much for visiting. Thank you for watching this video and supporting my work. If you like the video, please hit that little like button, hit subscribe and the little notification bell so you don't miss any of the other upcoming content. If you would like to support me on Patreon or with a one-time donation, those links can be found in the description as well. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.